get started here with recording. Now, um, thank you for joining us today. My name is August, part of the team here at Pear Shopper. Uh, with, with me today is Pamela. Excited to talk with you today about the software. Uh, we're going to be going over our goal today is to help you um, talk about how to keep your inventory accurate with the Repair Shopper, doing a deep dive into Repair Shopper's inventory module. Uh, we'll be spending on a couple minutes just to go over the basics, give you a brief overview of everything just in case you haven't started using the inventory system within Repair Shopper. Then we'll get into some best practices for some areas that we've seen uh, users ask questions about. Please ask any more questions. We've seen some questions already be coming in. Um, we'll have time at the end and during the session to be sure we can answer those questions for you. Of course, at any time, if you do have questions, feel free to send us an email, help at repairshopper.com. Our support team would be glad to help you answer any questions. If you have any issues, um, please let us know. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Pamela, let her get started with this. And uh, yeah. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, it's great to have... Um, such a large turnout. Um, I'm hoping that we can help get this, um, get your questions answered, give you some more information about, um, about the inventory system, help go over some of the trouble spots. I think it'll be fun. So hopefully everybody can see the screens. August, can you see it? I want to make sure yeah. this is working. Cool. Okay. <laughs> So diving right in, I'm going to quickly just sort of go over some quick basics just to make sure we're sort of all on the same page. This should be pretty speedy, um, and then we'll get into more, more detail. So um, this is, of course, the product page, and this is a specific product. Um, just a couple of things to note um, that sometimes confuse people. Um, we, you, of course, have the name and the description. Um, Maintain stock, you'll want to check that when it's a product that you want to keep track of um, the quantities for. This is sort of a funny one because it's in uh, one-time use product, so that's a little bit different. Let me see if I can find. This one will be good. So this is just a standard maintain stock product. It's serialized, which means um, you can see the serial numbers for the different products, so you can track them one by one. Um, you'll want to, um, so this is really helpful when you need to know a specific, you know, this item went to this person, and you can track the whole history of it. Um, of course, you've got the price, you've got the cost. Um, if you've got wholesale pricing enabled, you'll see that. Um, some of these fields may not be visible on your screen just because of different settings. Um, over in the settings page, enable and disable things. Um, but this is basically a, a standard product. Um, you can also see old labels and in-stock labels, and we'll go into that a little bit more. Um, so that's a product. Um, oh, you can see, of course, the overview of all your products here. And it, you can filter them. If you've got your, your products categorized, you can filter them so you can see specific ones. From this page, you can also disable products. Um, it doesn't delete them, it disables them so that if you've sold them, um, they remain in the system so that you can see the history of them. Um, you can also search from here. So I should be able to find that MacBook Air. There it is. Search also to see just what's in stock. Um, from here too, you can see the um, various inventory modules. Um, and so these are all related to inventory, obviously. So you've got purchase orders, which is where you go to um, add new inventory items to the system. You can, of course, if it's just a plain old ordinary maintain stock product, you could do that. But using purchase orders gives you um, historical information that's really helpful and lets you track where you bought things from, when you bought them, all of that. Pending orders um, will let you see when you go into the negative when you sell things that you don't actually have yet. Um, pending orders is the list of all those products that need to be purchased and need to go onto the purchase orders. Um, returns manager tracks returns when um, occasionally customers need to return their stuff. And when that happens, the return manager, returns manager will help you out there. 
vendors. Um, these are who you buy from. Um, lets you organize that. Um, stock take, this is where you go when you want to count what stuff is in your system. And we'll go over that in a little bit. Um, because sometimes that causes confusion for people, but it's important in terms of getting that inventory straightened out. Um, labels, you can see the labels for your products. You can import products um, and export. So this is good when you want to do a bulk update of your products. Um, update the pricing on everything. Make it 15% more expensive or whatever. Um, you can export edit things in, in Excel and then re-import. Um, bundles, bundles are super cool for when you um, want to sell like a labor and a, a physical item together. One of them might be taxed, the other one might not be. And you don't want to show the breakdown of labor versus parts, you just want to give one line item to the customer for them to um, see. And so bundle items are your friends there. And then view disabled items so that you can find those lovely things that you no longer sell, once again, if you need to get into them for historical reasons. Okay. Um, let's see. Other things that are related to inventory. I'm going to keep going, August, unless you jump in. No, that's great. I'm just cool. in the background answering these questions for everyone. <laughs> Yay, thank you. Um, we have, of course, inventory settings inventory preferences, um, it's a bunch of settings here. And so we have a, a wholesale pricing enabled. So you saw that on our inventory detail page. Customer purchase module you can enable here. Um, One-time use items, which are items that just once you're sold, they get automatically disabled. So they don't clutter up your inventory. Um, categories are down here. Um, and you can show them on the inventory page, you know, how I was filtering. Some people don't have that, that enabled, but this will give you that functionality. Um, and of course you can edit these. Keep in mind, these are nicely nested. Some people don't, aren't aware of that, but you can nest your categories and get pretty granular. I'm pretty sure you can go pretty deep in the nesting. Um, enable photos, enable the back order. Most of you should at this point have the back order feature enabled, but every now and then I run into an old account where they don't have, people don't have that enabled yet. Um, and if so, you'll, you may want to play around with that. That gives you the ability to, to and know when you've sold beyond zero, down below zero, and get those things onto purchase orders so that you can, you can deal with that. Okay. Um, that's sort of the, the very, very basics. Um, do you want to take over, August, or do you want me to keep going? Yeah, no, I can definitely jump in. Uh, we've had a few questions that were answered during that flow there, um, talking about the, pre the course settings and preferences to enable. Um, I'm going to do my uh, same thing. Instead of doing a remote login, I'm going to share my screen here. And so back, back to our products homepage. Um, kind of want to start off just talking a little bit about that inventory flow, you know, because of course repair shopper as a system is designed to help you track your products, your physical goods that are in your store um, in a digital system to tie it into your billing, reporting, um, all the things that you do in your business on a day to day basis. So that inventory flow, I'm just kind of giving a, a concept of how repair shopper best practices for your inventory um, is designed to allow you to bring in inventory items through our purchase order module. Now, purchase orders, we'll get into this a, a little bit more in just a moment here, but um, purchase orders allow you to create a, an order. Um, as you see here, we have a few different orders. Um, checking this one out here just briefly, we can see the vendor has been created there, and you add these products where you would um, either uh, just manually select those products, um, add them in by um, low stock items or whatever it may be, and then you can receive these into your inventory. Selecting your serial numbers, of course, is a part of that flow as well. Um, uh, other options for bringing inventory into the system include our customer purchase feature, which we won't get into too much here today, but uh, you have the ability to purchase devices or products directly from customers, um, but our inventory is the most recommended. Um, now, the inventory flow, bringing it in, of course, sending it out um, is done through invoicing, um, adding products to invoices, will reduce the inventory levels of those products. 
Um, you have the ability to do things like stock takes to, to make sure that you can keep your product levels accurate. As we all know from time to time, things may happen where you need to make sure that your inventory is accurate. Counting that using stock takes is a feature to help you make sure your flow is accurate. And then we do also have a returns manager, which will give you the chance to um, manage those times where parts get broken or parts are damaged. You need to send them back to your supplier. So using the returns is going to help you with that inventory flow. Um, so, of course, that's a very high-level view there. Um, as we dive into talking about that, starting off your inventory, um, sometimes we know that you may have tried it out, trying to reboot your inventory system there. We recommend um, doing an import through bulk updates. I want to take a moment to note a few things there. So from our inventory modules here, you can see that we have an import and export option. I'm going to click on this import option, um, and this will show you um, kind of uh, the recommendation there is to um, use a template by exporting your current products to a CSV file. Um, our inventory um, export that you saw previously will allow you to have all of the headers that we have listed here um, included in your inventory export. From there, you're able to add the products you need, um, add the information such as name, description, um, cost, anything else like that. A few things I wanted to note, though, during this time is when you're bulk updating your inventory, um, you know, you may have product SKUs or other vendor information that you've added in. Um, those SKUs um, can be updated with a vendor name dash SKU. One thing we recommend as a good strategy is from your inventory, whenever you are starting that uh, initial export, is to go ahead to our inventory modules and create your vendors. Creating vendors allows you to track those vendors. You can even add in account level information for reference purposes um, or to email those purchase orders to a vendor. So we can see we have some vendors here set up. Um, that adding those vendors in before your import and then attaching a vendor to a product, uh, which I'll show off real quick here, um, from in, which Pamela showed up previously there, actually, will give you the chance to make sure that um, when you do the export, you'll see the vendors and the formatting of those things before you do the import. Um, now, we do want to note that we do have knowledge-based articles that cover things such as bulk importing inventory, the breakdown of that CSV file, and some other articles here. Um, our technical support team has been working hard to continue to, to, continue to improve our knowledge base articles. So if you haven't looked at them in a long time, they've probably been updated and, and refreshed. Um, so there's definitely a lot of helpful information there to look at. Um, one thing that, again, going back to that product imports there, um, is I want to mention that ID column. It's that first column here. If we notice that ID, we have this line here. It says, if an ID is supplied, it will update the matching record instead of creating a new one. So what happens is our system repair shop will create an ID for the products that when you export, it'll show that ID. If you make updates and re-import that, it'll allow you to have that ID updated. Um, if you do not have an ID, it'll create a new product. If you're starting fresh with all of your inventory, um, I recommend deleting, marking the delete column as true and re-importing that file. Now, when we talk about importing files, um, there may be some times where your import doesn't go quite as planned. So from our reports section, we do have ability to view your results of your imports to see if there's any issues with those imports. Now your downloads will show you those files like your exported inventory file. The import results will give you the chance to see the success of those. And you can see most of ours are customer imports here. We have products and services as well that will give you more details. So very helpful there, something to take a look at as you're getting started with your inventory import. Um, I want to move into another element that we get a lot of questions about here just for the starting point um, that we do have a knowledge base article on, and that's the difference between our inventory and our parts. So inventory um, is the place where you go to track products that you're reordering on a regular basis. Um, and if we click on this more tab, we have our parts tab over here um, hidden. You can, of course, rearrange these in the settings, but this parts order list allows you to create a one-off order that's attached to a specific ticket. Um, it's designed to allow you to track the order date, arrival date. And just taking a moment here real quick to click into this ticket here, we can see that this ticket, when you add a charge, it's going to show that as a part order. 
So it allows you to track that product, but it's much more similar to a manual item as opposed to a tracked item that you would possibly reorder or keep in inventory. There's definitely a lot of value for that though in scenarios where you're ordering a one-off random product. Um, you would rec I would recommend um, using the part order feature for those random products that you don't need clogging up your inventory, um, but you do need for a specific scenario. Now, Pamela, before I move forward anymore, is there any questions that I didn't touch base on with those that have come up recently that we can answer real quick? There's a, there's a couple of things that, I, that are coming up in the things. I see um, several requests for um, serialized items in bundles. <laughs> um, several people are saying, we need this, we need this. And so I just want to say we're clearly going to pass that along to the team um, mm -hmm. as a feature request. Um, you are heard, I get it. Um, also, just to clarify, um, inventory, um, although, you know, sort of like in casual life, I think of inventory as physical things. In the repair shop or universe, you, I, I like to say that inventory is anything that'll go, can be anything that'll go on a line item. So it does include services. Um, make your life easy, put services in as um, inventory items, categorize them as labor, um, and that way you don't have to, you know, say I charge $150 an hour every single time. Um, just let it be an inventory item. Um, there's also some sort of magical inventory items that are used by the system, deposits and um, discounts and things like that. So um, I like inventory items are things that go on an invoice. So they can be services, they can be physical stuff. Both of those, yeah. both of those work. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also, people have really good questions. Yeah, some of these are great. We'll probably want to touch base on them after we go through a lot of the uh, core uh, topics we're going to touch base on today. Yep. Um, do we want to move into the um, first and first out product instance pricing? Do you want to move into that? Sure, sure. So um, here, let me share my screen. Da -ba -da -ba -dum. Sorry for the delay. I have so many open windows. There we go. Okay, I've got a purchase order open. So first in, first out. Um, so there's sort of, let's see how I can explain this. So going back to an inventory item. Um, let's take just random maintain stock inventory item. This two terabyte hard drive. Oh, it's serialized. Hang on, I want a non-serialized, just a plain old ordinary thing. This one. This one should be good. Okay, this is a maintained stock, quantity of four. Um, let's say we purchase it um, for, so if you purchase it on, let's make the numbers easier. <laughs> Let's say we start out with the cost of this thing being $10, okay? And we buy one on a purchase order for $10. Um, and it's a brand new thing. And you can create brand new things from purchase orders. Um, just use the manual add button. Um, the first one you buy is $10. Let's say the second one you buy is $20. You spend $20 on the purchase order. The system will automatically update this average price, this price cost to be the average price cost so that it's 15. So then when you go ahead and sell it, um, the first one that you put on an invoice will be 10. And the second one will be 20 because it'll remember that the first one you, you bought was $10 and the second one you bought was 20. And it's going to assume no matter which one of them you sell, you know, cause you're grabbing from the bundle, um, you know, the little box on your shelf, it'll assume, it'll know which one, it'll assume that the first one is the one that, that you purchased is the first one that goes out. Okay. Did that make sense? Sometimes this is easier to explain in writing, but hopefully that made sense. Um, so that's, that's sort of the generic way you do it. However, if you are on a purchase order, um, ba -ba -dum, let's get this there, and you're ordering specific things, and let's go to this one, and you've received all your stuff, let's receive just a couple, 
and then you click on the received items labels, what you will end up with, and I've received this one, um, and what you'll end up with is a received item label that you can stick on that particular product. And if I'd received a bunch of these, I'd have a bunch of labels, but for now I just have one. The system then assumes that when you use a barcode to scan this received item label, that um, it will know exactly which one it is. So it'll know that you spent $20 on that one. So in that case, although the price on the product page may be updating and averaging, the system will know exactly which one it was and it will get the price right for that particular thing. Um, does that make sense? So you'll want to decide um, sort of whether you want to use these received item labels which, and, and use a barcode scanner and scan everything or whether you want to, on your OtterBox, I don't know why it's got a weird description, that would be why, <laughs> um, whether you want to use these basic labels. Now the basic labels are generic and they'll show up the same for all of your instances of the product. Whereas if you go back, um, the in-stock labels will show the one that is specific to that particular thing. So, um, sort of at some point you need to make a decision, I think. Um, I mean, you could do it other ways, but for the sake of clarity and sanity, I'd recommend sort of choosing, are we gonna use the in, the in stock labels and scan them with barcodes when we sell them, or are we gonna use the basic label and be a little more loosey-goosey? Um, and it's up to you what, which way you do it, um, but just be aware that you sort of have these two routes and how specific you're gonna be. Um, Okay, did that make sense? <laughs> it's hard, these webinars, because I never know don't have the feedback. Did that make sense, August? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Would you clarify? <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, no. Okay. Um, do we have any specific questions here? Yay! In stock labels don't work if you sell bundles. Right, that's right. You would, you would have, because you'd have the bundle. You should be able to, bundles have labels, don't they? I'll go into that later. Yeah. Um, yeah, they do, they but yeah, they definitely don't support the, in, the product instance. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, product it, instance labels the same way. So definitely yeah. recommend passing it. We'll, we'll pass that feedback along to our team for sure. Um, Bundles. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, taking notes. Yeah. Now we, we do have some questions here. I want to take a moment just to kind of touch base on some of those. They're coming in pretty quick here. So we're trying to keep up with them as <laughs> best as we can. Um, uh, we have, uh, I lost it, a question here. Um, uh, well, we have a question here just in general about inventory. Would the inventory be the best option in repair shop to also list services and not just products or these go to a different feature? Um, I would say that, yeah, it would be the best case scenario to, uh, list services in Repair Shopper, um, as well as your products. Pamela did mention that previously. Um, we do have some questions here about um, adding, adding serial numbers to an invoice. Um, I can briefly share that just real quick, just to make sure that we can talk about that. Whenever you add a product to an invoice, we see we have a serialized product. Our invoices would allow you um, to make sure that as you add a product, um, let's click on this invoice here. Let's go ahead and we can scan a barcode, of course, for doing the serialized. Um, uh, but in this case, for serialized products, you would be selecting that instance, scrolling down, and you'd select that serial number there. And you'd be able to select from that. Now, um, if you had a serial number, a product instance barcode or a serialized barcode, it would automatically select that instance for you. So, um, yeah, got some other feedback here. Um, Ooh, August, can I hop in for a second? Can I share my screen? Somebody just asked about sort order. I just want to mention what that is because that comes okay. up well, a I lot. Can, I can touch base on that real quick. Can you, just show, can you show, the, yeah. really show the point of sale module? Yeah. Or, yeah. For sort order, which is shown here, um, you can create a sort order for products. And sort order is used in our POS uh, module. POS is our quick sale feature, allowing you to quickly sell a product. And we see here we have these pages, page one, page two, page three. And giving 
a sort order, 1 through 20, 21 through 50, uh, 51 through 100. gives you a chance to list products on this page for quickly accessing the products. So that's the purpose of the sort order. Um, of course, you have forms and categories as well in there. And with that, you can use that as a sort to organize your products in a list as well. So, um, we have some questions here. Um, serialized serial numbers on part orders. Um, part orders do not support like serialized products in the same way that you would have it supported in our inventory system because serialized numbers, serial numbers are getting tracked as a product instance in more detail. So if you have a part order with a serial number, we recommend adding that serial number to a description. Otherwise, if you want more tracking on serialized products, create an inventory item. Uh, so just want to touch base on that real quick. Um, question here, can I disable serialized items when they're already serialized? Um, that would be something where if it's been serialized, Pamela, you may want to touch base on that a little bit more here. Um, when you make a product serialized, they're asking, yeah, how to stop it. Yeah, you, you cannot, you cannot just uncheck that box. You'll need to recreate the product as a non serialized item. That's a quick one. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> so I want to take a moment here. We talked about labels, um, product instance barcodes and all that, um, where you have that extra control for pricing. But another benefit of labels comes in with the stock take feature. So we have a lot of questions about stock takes. And so we want to take a moment just to walk through that stock take feature. Um, from our inventory modules, you can select the stock take. And so stock takes give you the chance to create a list of products that you want to count. On a regular basis, you can choose the regularity of that. And then you're able to scan barcodes or um, manually select the products to count. Now this stock take page here is showing us all of our pending stock takes. We've created these from lists. If I create our, go to our inventory modules here, there's a little bit of stuff here that um, we wanted to make you note of is our stock take lists are found here on our inventory modules. And as we see this list here, this can show us all of the ones we've created. Um, as well as the frequency of these stock takes. Because you can assign stock takes to specific users so they can get notified about those stock takes needing to be completed. We can see our previous stock takes from these on list here and also start a new stock take from these lists. Now, I'm gonna click into this one here real quick just to show this off. We see the stock take, we can edit the name, assignee, the frequency. We can also add products. Now, in this scenario, we have made this a full stock take, so it pulls all those products from that moment we created this stock take. So there may be a scenario where you want to add products from categories, you can do that. You can add a random size, or you can add all of your inventory items to do a count um, as necessary. I'm gonna hit back here. And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna quickly just do a new stock take of this random count. So when we do this, it's going to um, take a snapshot of your inventory, We'll refresh our page, let those products get populated. And now we can see all these products over here on the side. These are the products that the stock take is asking us to count. Now you may have this be categorized by uh, part type or device type or something like that, where you'd be able to go in and if you had serialized product instances, begin scanning those product barcodes. As you scan them, it would add them to account. Um, of course, I just selected that Dell computer here where I'm able to either select a number like I can select one, which will add that product instance, um, that product count. Otherwise I can do a count here or hit change and go to the next product. So using barcodes can definitely make this faster. You may have a scenario where stock product instance barcodes, you can count each individual item. Otherwise um, you would be able to scan the, the basic label. Um, one thing to note with the product instance barcodes, just like with the inventory invoice, if you've already scanned that item and it's not marked as available, um, it would not give you the ability to scan it for stock takes. It would, it would not show it as in stock and it would give you a little beep that I can't make a sound for. You won't be able to hear that on here. So um, just want to note that that product instance barcodes are used one time. So if you've sold it already, you'd have to use the basic label to account. Um, so going through these, you know, you can add a few more products. We can say two, save. We're not going to go through a whole list of this, but you can see the idea there where you're able to count these products and then finalize the stock take. 
When you finalize that stock take, it gives you the chance to go through and resolve, make sure everything's correct. You might want to look and see what's happening. We can see our expected quantities, counted quantities, and you can choose to update these and add notes. This will help for the CSV report of this stock take, but we're not going to update this today. We're just going to go ahead and submit this. So when we submit, it'll take us to our report where we can export to a CSV file for saving it. Um, this was something you can also reference from a previous, uh, from the stock take uh, list that we showed off on the previous screen as well. And it'll show you expected quantity, your loss quantity, your cost, all those things. And we haven't updated any of these though. So um, we've completed that stock take. So that's kind of a very brief run through of the stock take feature. You can see all of those open ones there. We can view completed ones, search by stock take lists as well. So um, just hey, wanted to uh, run through that. Yeah. Hey, uh, somebody asked a question about, well, what if I want to just add individual items to a stock take? And I, I wrote in the text that you could just create a new stock take without a list. Yeah. Could you just quickly just show how that would? Yeah, so I quickly created that new stock take. And when you do that, Thanks. it is going to just let you start scanning or typing a product so we can type in like, uh, you know, whatever product we want to type in and start doing it and finalize it just like we would. And so if we did that, um, we're, so we can add in the products. We can say we have five, change that. And then from there, you can finalize that count. Where would then be able to tell you, hey, look, expected five, we had five, we have no variance, so we can submit that. And so that will let you finalize that if you need to do a, quick count of a specific product or a few products there. Yeah, good question. <clears throat> no, um, I misunderstood the question. She actually meant, can she add it to a stock, the item, a specific item to a stock take list? Um, yeah, um, oh wait, from the stock take <laughs> lists, uh, it's Rather going than to- Rather a category. <laughs> yeah, so let's, let's click this one here. Um, um, the stock takes are going to allow you to add in uh, products, which from a category, a size, or at all. So it's not allowing you to actually add in specific um, products. So we'd recommend adding those to a category to count. I've noticed a question here that I can definitely quickly answer. So I'm going to do that. Um, it's jumping around though, just a moment. So I don't want to jump into that. Just uh, so we have a few there. Um, I don't see any stock take questions here right off the top. We're probably gonna pivot over to these questions sooner just because we have so many of them coming in. Um, there's, there's a magnificent number of questions. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes, they're signing. Um, so um, again, stock takes, you can see your archive completed ones. You can clone a stock take if necessary. Um, archive would mean if you deleted one of these, it doesn't completely delete it. So. Um, <clears throat> Oh, I have some great questions I want to quickly answer, but I feel like I'll be jumping around way too much. Um, so let's see, taking a quick break here. Um, we have, uh, I guess we can, we can um, Pamela, jump into the pending orders feature. Um, sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, let me find my way back. Dun, dun, dun. Not that. Where'd it go? Here we go. I don't know why I have a register. Okay. So pending orders. So in your inventory modules, you have a link to pending orders. Um, and so these are pretty nifty um, because this is basically all the stuff that needs to go on to a purchase order. Um, and if you in some of them, you can just add the product via the shopping list. Like, oh, well, by the way, I know I need to get such and such a thing, and that will add it. You can see it. Um, here's one that's from shopping list. Things will also get added if they're low stock. So let me show you this. Da, 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 da. So this is a maintained stock product that currently has no product instances, you're supposed to, it's supposed to be reordered, which means also added to the pending orders list at one and with a desired stock level of two. So because this is low stock, because that reorder is 
um, above the quantity that we actually have, this shows up here. Um, so because this is a test account, of course, there are 103 currently on purchase orders because we've gone sort of nuts, but here is, here is where this is pulling from. It'll, they'll also get added if they're on an invoice, if a product is on an invoice um, and you don't actually have them in stock. So you can see, so this LCD screen, this, you know, Kevin, Kevinville wants to buy one, but we don't have any in stock. We've made it so that you can take Kevin's money and get paid for this thing, but you do need to address this pending order, okay? And so to do that, you can, um, once you have your pending orders and it's getting sort of filled, you can take this and add it to a purchase order. You could add everything to a purchase order, but you can at least just add this one. So we're gonna create a brand new purchase order um, and voila, we can change it so it's attached to the appropriate vendor. But in any case, here's this. Um, I'm going to, um, I, I, I could add additional things to this purchase order. Um, when the box arrives, I go to check it in and I click receive all and I'm gonna fulfill it to this invoice. Okay, and now when I go to that invoice, 12560, 12560, it'll no longer, Kevin, we can now say, hey, Kevin, your, your thing is here. And there it is, okay? So that's sort of a quick and dirty overview of um, pending orders and back orders. Um, it's super helpful to, to do this just to keep track of where these, <laughs> which invoices need their, their stuff fulfilled on. Okay, Are there questions about pending orders coming in? Or we need to order. Mm, so it sounds like somebody's asking, um, would it be possible to have the pending orders page just show, to be able to filter it by low stock versus shopping list versus invoice, I think is what somebody's asking, or, or at least what a solution would be for that. And I think that's probably a good idea. Right now there isn't a way to, to filter it. Um, you just see the whole thing all consolidated. I'll pass that along. Yeah, somebody mentioned their pending order list is so big, it's impossible to keep track of. We'd recommend reviewing like those, um, you know, those products on um, like those stock levels because that can add length to it. So making sure your, your desired stock level, your reorder points for products are set correctly. Um, that'll help avoid those low stock lines that would add a lot of lists to the pending orders. And one, one way to solve it, of course, is to just bite the bullet and add everything to purchase orders, <laughs> check them in, and then do a stock take to clean everything up. That'll clean everything out um, and just make sure also these low stock items are low stock for good reasons and not for, you know, accidental. I, I typed that I needed five and I don't really. Yeah. Um, and in that note, um, somebody's asked, can we have it auto fulfill items without having to do it ourselves? Um, that is, um, we do not auto fulfill the items just because there's some things there that um, we don't assume product instances have been applied to a specific product. So we wouldn't have an auto fill feature there that would assign product instances to the wrong uh, product. So we recommend selecting to auto fill those, to fulfill those when you create a purchase order. So. Yes. Mm. August, do you want to do returns? Yeah, I'd be glad to. So I want to touch base for a moment on um, something that no one ever enjoys in any environment, which is returns. Of course, as a business, having returns can be challenging. Um, and Repair Shopper can help you manage your return flow. Um, there, of course, is a few different scenarios that returns come in. Um, you may have a scenario where um, your returns have been, uh, a product has been sold to a customer and they have to um, bring that product back and exchange that. We're not gonna get into that flow today because that gets into invoicing and other things. So that may be a discussion for another time. Um, but you know, there is a returns flow um, through the refund flow in the invoicing for that situation. Um, other scenarios, um, so our returns manager allows you to create new returns for scenarios where a product hasn't been invoiced. 
Because if we see here, we can see refunded invoices have generated this return line, um, returns from our purchase order. Um, but creating a new return here is useful for scenarios where a product um, was dead on arrival. So we're going to save that and leave those other fields blank. You may want to add descriptions, assign a vendor to that, just to note that for your returns list. But you're able to add items, either search the product or scan a barcode. And doing that would allow you to add that product. So let's go ahead and use that same little one in this package. Didn't work out well. So we've added that product to this return. Um, this is now a serialized product, I suppose. Looks like somebody did something pretty interesting to that product there. Um, but we can see that product now has been created as a return. Um, so the design here is to allow you to, as returns product, um, and we have a question here. Um, somebody thinks there's a bug with the specific thing. Probably won't uh, try to recreate bugs during this demo, but um, that's definitely something we'll look into, have our support team look into there. Um, but um, from this, from this um, flow, when you have a new return, you have the ability to mark it as broken. Um, that may happen. This can just be dead on arrival, broken because somebody dropped it or ripped it or whatever it may be. Um, otherwise, you can go through the return flow, where you can see that we can return, request a return, so RMA requested. Um, that would allow you to note that the status has changed, and you can also do things where if it's a new return, you can merge these together. So if it's the same vendor and you send them all together, you can merge those together. Or you can keep them separate just in case certain products haven't been, won't be accepted and others would be accepted. Um, so then from there, you can note that if it's been sent out, so that way you're able to track um, and of course we have filters, um, statuses that you can search from. So if you're going through marking all of your, looking at your requested ones, marking them as being sent, you'd have the ability there from it being sent to determine if it's been declined, repaired, refunded, or replaced. I want to take a moment to touch base on these four steps. Declined would mean that the RMA was not successful. Um, so it would um, not add an instance back into your inventory, but a note that, um, you know, for your reporting, for your, for your purposes to show that the army was not accepted. Repaired and replaced, those two options will actually um, create a new, um, re make that product instance that you have for this product, this, in this case an iPhone, available again in the um, inventory page. So it would use that same product instance and basically replace it with a new product. So you have a new inventory item available, you can go to that product and print off another label. Refunded would allow you to note that you got it for credit or something like that. They refunded you the money. So it would not add new products in, but for your accounting purposes, then you'd be able to manage your um, refunded levels there. So the goal of this flow here, and we'll just mark this one as RMA replaced, and that closes it out. Um, we can replace the serial number. It's got a new serial number here. Um, of course, that may be possible with serialized items. We'll skip that though um, for today. And that one has been completed. So you have the ability to um, manage those return flows. Um, so I see we have a question here. Um, well, um, we have a pending orders question. I'm just gonna go through a few of these real quick. Is there a way of manually deleting items from pending orders? There's not a way of deleting item from pending orders. Um, we'd recommend uh, just selecting all those items to fulfill that. If you have more questions about that specific account specific thing, send us an email and let us know. Um, oh man. I feel like we could have done two hours of inventory here, I think, with all these questions here. Some of these I'm like, oh no, I don't, I don't <laughs> have enough time to answer some of these questions. Um, I know. We're losing uh, some of our I'm earlier sorry. ones too. So many. RMA, um, when you send an RMA and they accept it, but when they send you a replacement product that is different, it's not the same product. Um, in that case, if you have an RMA where you send it, they accept it and send you a replacement product that's different, I would recommend marking that RMA as refunded and then creating a purchase order to note that new product has been created, brought into your inventory, since it is different products. But there is a question that we had asked previously, and this might also be a solution. I want to talk about moving product instances from one product to another. Um, 
So what I mean by that is, um, taking a moment here, I'm just going to keep on running with this, Pamela. Um, we can see that we have products. Um, let's go ahead. Uh, I like to look at our iPhones because our inventory is a little messed up here. We'll be honest with you guys. We have a lot of iPhones. Um, I don't even, what's an iPhone 6C? I don't know. Um, but let's look at this product here. It's got two of them. <clears throat> and this works on all products, including non-serialized products. But if we scroll down to these product instances, we have the ability um, to view all. One second, please. And when we view all and we're viewing the details, we can see we have this, this icon here. It looks like four little directional arrows. And it's asking you to move to a different product. So there's a few questions that ask how we may have purchased a product and it was the wrong product. Um, this ex um, exchange product was different than the one we sent in. What you have the ability to do is go to that product instance page and then select that instance and you can move it to a different product. So we can note, let's see, iPhone 6. Um, let's just move it to this iPhone 6 working. So we move that. It'll keep all the history of that product instance and it'll move it to that new product. So if we scroll down, we, let's refresh this page and make sure that refreshed it. And we can see product instance was now added. We view all of those. We can see uh, we have that in stock product. And we can click on the ID to show all of the notes there that happened to it, um, where we got it from, um, all the notes throughout the product. So um, definitely a great tool there to help with, um, uh, uh, with that. Um, we have a question here. Um, move it to the product page. We did that just to hide it so that it doesn't happen easily. Uh, it has to be something that's intentional. We'll definitely pass that feedback along. Um, another question here, why can't I see product instances? Um, one thing to notice, product instances are only showing on products that have maintained stock marked as true. If your product is marked as false, it won't have product instances to review, such as this discount. There's no in-stock uh, labels. There's no product instances to review there, so um, you wouldn't have that ability. Instances also require serialized. Uh, no, they actually, you do have the ability to view your instances from the quantity details. So even if a product's not serialized, viewing quantity details allows you to see all of your previous instances. So we scroll over to our most recent page, we can see our in-stock items where you can move these to products. You can also see where previous products have been placed, prints off instance specific labels, view purchase order details, add notes to these products. And so, uh, yeah, a little hidden there. Right, let's see. All right, yeah, I'm just kind of closing some of these questions out here. Um, uh, why can't we merge duplicate items and keep the history of both? We can do it with customers, but not items. Um, yep, that's just um, our inventory. You know, you can keep product instance details tracked, um, but products themselves are not able to be merged in that same method. So there's just a little bit more complication there with, with products than there is with the customers. So now, many good questions. <laughs> there was, we had one last thing we wanted to touch base on, I think, before we just kind of start trying to run through some of these questions. Um, one of the first questions we got is, what is the easiest route to determine how often an item is sold? Kayla, do you want to? Sure. Touch reports. Base on <laughs> yeah. Let's do reports. Ba -dum -ba -dum. This one. Okay, I think I'm showing the right thing. So, <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> so reports, we have um, several inventory related reports. Um, inventory valuation report shows you what you have in stock right now. Um, keep in mind, this is a good one to run on a schedule so that you email yourself um, this report as of a specific date. Um, and do that relatively frequently. That way you can know how your inventory valuation goes up and down over time. There isn't a way to do this report as of a particular date. So scheduling it makes that super handy. Um, inventory stock out report tells you what you're low on stock on um, so that you can 
address that issue, um, probably via pending orders and um, purchase orders. Inventory changes just sort of shows what changes have occurred recently. Um, so you can keep track of what your people are up to. Um, that's by date. Product labels report will show you all. This is going to be scary. Um, but generates a report that shows labels. So you can mass print your product labels for a particular category of products. Um, logistics CSV export exports your logistics um, data for big chain accounts. Inventory aging shows how old stuff is. Um, it might be time to put some of these old things. Well, that's not very exciting. The cost, you know, like people aren't eating enough Costco chocolate almonds, obviously, so we should clearly lower the price a little bit. Um, shrinkage report just shows which, um, which products have been lost, what ones you um, have been broken or trashed or returned. So you can keep track of that. Um, purchase orders, this also exports your purchase order information. Um, if you are using Domo, um, you also, please let me have login credentials for this. You have additional, oh dear. I remember it. Do you? Can you do this part? <laughs> Well, let's see if this works. No, we don't need to. Oh, good. Okay, good. We're here. So inventory, there's a number of cards here. Um, and with Domo, one thing to keep in mind with Domo is that you can drill in. Um, and this is true for all sorts of things. And I don't want to spend too much time on this because I know um, it's 11.58 and not all of you have Domo, but you can um, always do filters on these reports. Um, and these let you, um, so I could do all things that have quantities of, you know, zero or whatever. Um, just, just as a handy tip for Domo in general, <laughs> um, use the filters to get the specific information you need if there isn't something that you already need, um, already made, okay? Um, what was the specific question somebody asked? Is there a way um, to filter inventory aging across locations? I'd expect that to work. Does that not work? We haven't touched on big chain. Can I bump over to a big chain account for a sec? Go for it. Da, 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 da. Sorry for this. Okay. So for, um, Oh, but I logged in as the wrong person. So for big chain, of course, um, inventory looks very similar. Um, but when you go into it, you can see where, oh, I'm, you can see how many are at each location. And if I was in a particular location, I'd see the details for that product at that location. You also can move products via um, the logistics. So if we want to transfer inventory, um, this test account, this account is a mess, but um, test transfer for a webinar. And I can do it from the West Coast to the East Coast. And on the next page, we can add some products. So we'll add ants. One ant is moving across the country. Um, and then you can go back to the logistics tab and move it over. Um, so that's, that's the overview of how, a quick, quick, quick overview of how, what's different about um, inventory in big chain. Um, I suspect those questions. Oh, so somebody wanted to know about the reports. I'll check on the, I'll check on those reports questions. Do you want to just jump in to, at this point it's noon. Do you know whether, um, I spelled it wrong. Do you know whether um, the webinar will keep going August if we ex go over this minute? Like, does it shut off? <laughs> I, I don't think so. 
We don't, I don't think, think so. so. So we still have 84 attendees. I mean, obviously, we do have a few more questions here that I feel like we could, We some of them we may not be able to get into, and I've been trying to note that for people. Um, just to, so just so that maybe some of these have been like specific instance questions that our support team can help out with as well. But um, yeah, this call yeah. could be very many hours long. <laughs> so <laughs> and yeah, so I, I don't know. I think that we, we prepared for questions, but uh, we definitely appreciate the feedback here for this. Um, it's, it's definitely uh, exciting. We have gotten confirmation that keeps going. So um, I'll see should if we can keep... stop. <laughs> um, <laughs> should, we, should we just keep answering some questions for a while? I suppose so. Um, there are some questions that are like more invoice related. Somebody asking about returns um, with restocking fees. Um, we may not be able to get into that question today, but we do have a knowledge base article on restocking fees, I believe. That's a great conversation for maybe invoicing um, as another uh, um, as another question there, um, um, we have a question, we have a note here that shipping costs gets added to purchase orders. It splits it amongst all products. Um, uh, but it looks like the shipping cost doesn't appear to be added to the item from a reporting perspective. Um, so shipping cost does get included in the cost of the item. Um, if you're noting that it's not actually being shown as the cost is being adjusted when you invoice it out. Please, uh, you know, send us an invoice, send us an email with example of that purchase order we can look into. Um, we may be able to look into that and see there, but um, okay. Some bundle questions. There's some warranty and out of warranty items questions. How does it track warranty items? Um, I'm not sure if we can dive into that. Uh, um, too much here right now. Um, also, um, for those of you that do need to stop, we're going to take another 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just to kind of go through some of these questions. Um, again, this is being recorded. Um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll definitely be um, answering these questions. If you want to keep on listening, uh, we'll definitely be glad to keep on talking. Um, of course, you can always email us in questions, help at repairshopper.com. Um, so, so I suppose, Pamela, if you if you see any questions, we can kind of take turns jumping through them. Yep. Maybe. <laughs> so, so many. Um, let's see. Can you show us more about setting up bundles? Let me share. That's an easy one. Da, 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 da. Struggle. My biggest problem in this life is finding the right tab. Okay. Um, bundles. Bundles are cool. Um, oh, I'm in this one. Okay, that's fine. That works. I'm in a weird account. Test bundle. Um, thing plus labor. So um, oh, the way you do this is you can do it from the inventory page, go to um, the bundles thing. And from here, you can add items. So we're going to add an hour of labor. And then we can add um, a thing. I have no idea what's on this account because it's a weird one. Okay. So now the total is 300. Um, and let me just duplicate this for a second. And so if we wanted to, though, we could sell it for 250. Okay. And that gives a, um, so that it's, it's cheaper if they buy it by the bundle. Um, and there's that. If I go to an invoice now, we're going to sell this to the West Coast customer. Test bundle. There it is. I see it. Boy, this person has a lot of pending ticket charges. And there, all the customer sees is this. Um, and you can expand it and see what it what the constituent items are, um, but you but the all the customer will see when they look at the PDF is just the test bundle. 
that one single line item. So it's nice for masking that stuff. It's nice for making one taxable, one not taxable, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, can you include sales tax in the bundles? Say you have an iPhone 6 battery. Yes, you can. And so um, here, over here, um, labor is, tax, is not taxable in the screen, presumably is. Um, and so that's fine. And so it'll calculate tax correctly. Um, the item does need to be in inventory before adding it to a bundle. Um, I want to know as well, somebody has a question here, does updating the cost on an item in a bundle update the bundle cost as well? Um, it will update the cost itself, but the, but, the, but the price that you're associating with it, if you want to go back to that bundle page. This one. So like if you notice the price there and the unit price, um, those will not be adjusted, but um, the cost line, if you, up, if you adjust the cost of those products um, whenever you sell them, that would be associated on the bundle itself, but. Um, I'm gonna make this 50 for easy math. Come back here. So that changes that there. But Crash. it isn't just a bundle. No, it's price. still 250. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So. All right. With that. Okay, so question here, is there a way to organize stock takes without having to add items individually to the list? Seems like you can do all or nothing or add one by one to those lists to hone in on specific inventory. Um, I'd recommend the best way to organize stock takes is to do by category. Generally, of course, you have categories, which would mean it's a specific type of product that's in a specific area. Splitting up stock takes so you don't spend five hours on a stock take can be more helpful in my personal experience counting screens and then counting batteries and counting iPhones and then counting accessories as separate stock shakes can help streamline that uh, stock take process a little bit. Okay, another follow-up question. Uh, great question here. If you have a stock take list with all items and add items to inventory after creating this, will the new inventory items be included in the stock take list thereafter? Or must these new items be added to the stock take list? Those items that you've created after that will not be added to it. So you'd have to either create a new stock take list. Um, I'm not sure if, if you just went back to the stock take and added all products. I don't believe it would duplicate that. So you may be able to just go to that same stock take list and click add items, all items, and it should just add any that aren't already there. So. Sorry, I'm typing like crazy. Um, question here, Kiani, uh, somebody asked, could you use the stock take to bypass the need for a purchase order to update quantity? You could, but I don't know if I would recommend it. Um, you know, the purchase orders do give you the chance to note where the product came from, but stock takes can be more than expected and you can update the counts that way. So yes, technically may not be, um, there may be some areas where that, may not work well, but it's possible. All right. So I'm going to try to skip through some of these like feature requesty type things, even though really a lot of great thoughts here. We do have all these questions saved after this call as well, so we can go back through and if we forgot any, um, make sure we can note those. Um, so. If you feel like a question got forgotten, email us. Otherwise, we also have these saved as a list there. Um, yeah, so some of these I'm just gonna note. Feature requests. Um, um, questions here, is there a way to sort pending orders by low stock and back stock? Um, at this time, I'm gonna share real quick, just again, um, from our product inventory page, these pending orders does not have a ability to filter out ones that are low stock versus um, uh, listen to shopping list. We added it directly from this list here, um, but low stock and those this time cannot be sorted. I'd recommend, you know, Adding that to our feedback form, sending us an email, letting us know, but not this time. 
I can definitely see that being something that'd be possible, but, or being nice. I don't know if it's possible. I'm not, I'm not the developer. Uh, so uh, the development team has been working really hard to continue to uh, keep you guys updated on new features and of course, make sure that um, everything's working well, but. Um, uh, uh, we're using inventory to keep track of rental items. Is this, is this the recommended way or, oh my gosh, um, sorry. Uh, or is this rental request getting traction from a development standpoint? Um, at this time, I would say that um, using inventory to track rental items would be the recommended way. Don't have any feedback on any changes with the development process of that feature, but there is uh, definitely work around there using um, the inventory with returns to track products. Um, let me Awesome. Here's another one. On previous software I've used when creating a purchase order and the price has changed, it would give me the option to update to the new price. This is something that can be done in Repair Shopper. Um, when you're doing a purchase order, you'll see what the previous price was, and um, then you can update it for that instance. Um, for those parts that are those products that are being received on that particular purchase order. Um, if you want to update the price for the, or the cost for the, I guess you're asking about the price. If you want to update the price for the whole product. Oh, actually, no, I'm wrong. I was reading this as cost. So, um, no, it won't tell you, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm glitching this cause I'm, I was thinking cost, but price, um, I think you, do you see the price on the purchase order of the product? I'm flaking. Okay, um, starting to go, I'm looking. Purchase orders of a product, see the price. Here, hold on, I'm looking. Yeah, it will show the old price here. I'll share, <laughs> I'll share my yes. screen, sorry. <laughs> this one. Okay, so if you add a product to a purchase order and you want to update the price, you'll see the old price, but you won't have the option of updating it from there. So I would just right click open in a new tab and update the retail price on the actual product page. Um, the cost, of course, you'll see the old cost and you'll be able to update that easy peasy. Um, but to do the price, you'd need to open it there. But you would see, of course, that it's what the old price is. Phew. Let's see what other questions. I found. Mm, sinking to zero. I'm giving some pretty quick answers here on some of these. Apologize if. Oh, I lost the question. Somebody had a great question here. Um, Is it the one about keeping things in your bag? I want to answer that. So for. Somebody oh, no, asked. here it is. Okay, you, you <laughs> Okay, this one um, may not have like a very straightforward answer, but I'll give you some options here. Question was, how do you keep inventory correct when you use a part for shop use? Um, some of that may get into how you choose to account for those products with your bookkeeping methods in terms of, you know, there is some different philosophies on um, how those should be accounted for properly. Um, but when you're using a product for shop use, there may be some options where you would create an internal ticket um, to note that part's been pulled out of inventory. When you're using a part for a device you're selling, um, so maybe it's a product that you have purchased and you need to fix it before you resell it, um, that would be where you would take advantage of our refurbs module. We had some questions about that. I feel like we had enough where I'll take a few minutes just to touch base on refurbs. Um, refurb, our refurb manager allows you to create a new refurb. You can do it from this refurbs tab, from an inventory item. Um, if we look at a product's page here just really quickly clicking on this product here if we scroll down you can see this little wrench which will ask you to send it to refurb refurbs manager will allow you to select a product now i'm not showing us our product details hey, hey, wait. The product. august i'm not i'm not seeing your screen if you're if oh you my gosh we keep on throwing this around this so hard. cut that rewind a little bit refurbs your refurb manager um, well, you have the tab here. Products also can send a refurb from the product instance. Um, that's on the, top, the bottom of this product detail page. In this refurb here, you can edit a refurb. Um, you have the ability to um, pull parts 
um, onto this product as we see we've added this hard drive labor and these products actually adjust the cost of this item so it adjusts the cost it also pulls those items out of your inventory allowing you to add um, note that adjusted um, uh, item cost for when you sell the product so adding parts and completing that moving into stock would give you the chance to do that you can also use a part order within the refurbs to allow you to track a part order for a special order product on that refurb flow. So um, that's something you can take advantage of there for um, using a part for shop use. We had some questions there also about refurbs. It's a very brief um, question there. Um, I think that at this time though, a lot of these questions we're getting in are kind of flowing into the feature requesty. I'm noticing some weird things. Can you tell me more about this weird thing that our support team may be able to answer questions for you about? So it probably would be best for uh, just to go ahead and wrap this up here today. We don't want to get too long-winded or anything. Um, again, we just want to say thank you so much for all the time, and we hope you everyone has a great, uh, great rest of the week. Yes, thank you very much, everybody. It's been fun. <laughs>